Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. This is episode number 32. The Wall. The Wall. Urbe. Oh, that's right. Like yes. Wall. Like Come Wall. On, man. No, very good, very good. Okay, cool. So, uh, we got a pretty good show for you guys this uh, this week here. So, we're going to be talking about uh, the, the, the Week in Review. We're talk about Eric Carlson and uh, Brent Burns. Brent Burns obviously celebrating his 1,000th milestone, uh, the 1,000th game right. on the ice, uh, which is a very cool ceremony, so we'll be talking about that. Talk about Martin Jones and his stellar play, uh, everybody being so trade happy, <laughs> and uh, the game's coming up this week. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, well, to everybody in last week's live who was telling me that we should get uh, Rick Nash. <laughs> So, uh, on a more serious note, I, I shouldn't be laughing at that. It's uh, the reason that Rick Nash is not available to be signed by the Sharks uh, is because uh, he had the concussion injury and uh, the symptoms just haven't gone away. So, he's decided to call it a career. A, a great career, too short. Um, but there should no longer be talks of the Sharks uh, potentially signing Rick Nash by the fan base. I don't think that was ever really an option, but um, it's, thought, it's not an option anymore. I thought it could so, have been. But. Yeah. I think That's Aaron. I think Aaron thought that to spite me more than anything else. Because if a you're part bit. of the lives, I've been saying no, we're not going to sign Rick Nash. Please leave it alone. <laughs> uh, and the question keeps coming up. Anyway, we can review. We had four games, and we did, we did very very well. Yes, uh, played L.A. Mm -hmm. and that was actually a very close game, um, and it was a three to one win yeah. with an empty netter from Jumbo yes. once again. And I saw a stat on there that he. Was it one of the all-time leaders of empty net goals? Yeah. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. um, that's incredible. I think he has 18 <laughs> empty net goals in his career, which they don't say how, yeah. just how many. Well, here's the thing to think about that, right? So the empty net goal is like, oh, yeah, it's the only way he can score. No, it means that he's trusted on the ice when the game's on the line, that's right? When that, That's really what that means. Yeah. When we're up by a goal, you want your possession monster out there, and you want the guy who's going to get the pass up and out the zone. But he's also a precise passer, and he can pass it in long Direct distances net, yes. and <laughs> make it in. So, <laughs> yeah. Bad. So, good to see Jumbo getting uh, the empty netter on that one to uh, seal the deal. Uh, anytime we can stomp the Kings, I'm happy. But anytime we can really stomp the Oilers, it makes me pretty happy, too. Yes, that game was next, and... Uh, Oh, man, the Sharks really <laughs> took it to the Oilers. <laughs> Seven to two. That was an incredible game. Yeah. It was actually it's it's weird to say this, but it was a closer game than seven to two sounds. Okay. Um, the wheels kind of came off later in the third period, but for a while there, it was close. And I think uh, the Oils they made it four to two at one point, and it was kind of in the back of your head thinking, oh, here yeah. we go again. So uh, it's good for the Sharks to put the gap, foot on the gas yeah. and, and keep going. Um, the Oilers, which we had talked about before with the game last week, I believe, against Colorado, mm -hmm. were uh, they're a one-line team. Right. Um, you shut down that one line, and in this case, that one line, <laughs> how'd they do? <laughs> uh, well, so I, I, I tweeted out to ESPN. Uh, you guys, if you follow the show, you know there's a couple people on, on this show that I constantly <laughs> poke at. One of them is Mike Johnson, and the other one now is going to be ESPN. Uh, ESPN, of course, they put out the tweet that Connor McDavid dominated the Sharks with two goals when we beat them. I think it was like, what, 7-4 to four or something to that effect? I forget what it was. Yeah. But we just totally blew them out. Anyway, um, so I shot a tweet over to ESPN saying, hey, uh, I've got an idea for a headline for this game that uh, McDavid dominates the Sharks with one assist. <laughs> so um, It just, was a beautiful know, assist. Poking the bear. But, but yes. Yeah. Hey, man, that's, uh, that's really all I want to say about it. You know, I just wanted to you know, give ESPN right. what for. Yeah. You know? So uh, and yeah, McDavid line didn't really do anything that night. So I mean, they were dangerous. They're always dangerous uh, line. Results wise, they didn't really do much. Right. Yeah. He did hit a post. He, he had, they had chances. Sure. It wasn't like they got completely shut out. But right. um, on the score sheet, he had mm -hmm. one assist. And when you have the best player in the world, right. only getting one assist against you, uh, you you did pretty well. You have done him. the right thing. Yes. yes. So uh, the next game, Vegas Golden Knights. That one was uh, was pretty tight. We were down in the third, I believe, is what yes. it was, two to one. Yep. Uh, came back, scored a couple goals. Two goals in 39 seconds. Gotta part. love that. That was amazing. Uh, I was watching and I was like, I was screaming <laughs> on my couch, like, holy cow, this is great. Uh, Marshall, who was on the show oh, yeah. previously, uh, was at the game and uh, he, we were texting back and forth and he was thoroughly. He was in himself. Vegas. He was in yeah. Vegas for CES um, gotcha. and bought a ticket to go to the game, so he was there. Nice. Um, and he said it was very loud. Sounded like a Vegas. Um, Nightclub, okay. The way that the game, the way that all the entertainment, everything right. in between periods, and 
and everything. Uh, just very loud music and, nice. and very entertaining. He said very it was cool. very nice. Yeah. yeah. It'd be interesting to go there. Uh, I mean, obviously throwing the teal on, but be interesting to go into their barn and check it out. Yeah. So. And there were a lot of, it looked like to me, there was a lot of teal in the game, a lot of yeah. uh, Sharks fans there in attendance. They were specifically saying that they wanted to wear uh, whites, right? Have the, the home crowd wearing white uh, because Vegas was wearing white that game. Right. And it was going around on Facebook and Twitter and everything else. Like, if you're a Sharks fan and you're going to go, do not wear your away jerseys because you'll blend in with the crowd. We want to stand out, right? So mm -hmm. there were lots of spots of teal and black and whatnot in there and that's those were the Sharks fans. And the Sharks so. weren't even wearing teal that game, they were wearing their black jerseys. Yeah, because it was a Thursday game, wasn't right. it? Yeah. yeah, but it was on the road. Yeah, still, yeah. either way. Anyway, yeah. cool. Uh, the last game was a game against the Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators, yeah. and we had a Pavelski goal watch. The mood is tense. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> he got his uh, 26th goal yeah. of the season. Uh, we talked about this last week. We we're going to watch, do a Pavelski goal watch every week to see how, <laughs> if he gets to 40 goals this week, this yeah. year. This year. Or, uh, I would have liked to see him get a couple more for, for my comfort level and saying that I think he's going to get to 40. And, um, I, I, you know, you might be right. It, it's, it took him a whole week to score one goal. So, you know, time's starting to run out a little bit there, and uh, hopefully he picks it up a little bit more, but I would love to see him hit 40. That'd be great. And we're going to keep that little counter going, and uh, that's Screaming Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, that was a great game. 4-1. Um, to one. Yeah, uh, homecoming for Tierney and DeMello and right. Botker and Balsers and <laughs> anyone else that I'm I don't there? think so. Yeah, yeah I think we got them all. <laughs> that's, that's a lot uh, <laughs> coming back here. Uh, it's good to see the... the uh, Sharks take yeah. it to him after um, in Ottawa, right. not doing so well. So uh, the Sharks are rolling right now. It's fantastic to watch. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's exciting. Yeah, uh, but that brings us to yeah, that brings us to the uh, the the Burns one thousandth right. uh, game uh, celebration that they had. It was a ceremony before that game, which I thought was kind of weird because they had uh, the thousandth game a while back, and it's it was like over a week ago because right. we talked about it last episode, and yeah. all of a sudden now we've got the ceremony, which is fine, but. Um, yeah, maybe they had to dig up that tooth. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it was. So uh, the the uh, the gifts, I guess, that he right. got um, a two point six million year old megalodon tooth, which makes the most sense to me. Well, um, second most sense because it's a shark, shark right? Okay, it makes sense. Right. Um, he also got two antelope, which again makes sense because of the ranch. Live antelope. Live antelope. Right. Not, yeah. And they're well, not actually, like at the game. They didn't, they didn't give it specify. to him at the game. They didn't specify if I'm it was. I'm pretty sure it was alive. Could be in the freezer. Who knows? He likes to hunt them themselves. So Fair enough. Yeah. So a couple antelope, which is great. I think Doug Wilson had made the comment, well, I've never had to follow two antelope before. <laughs> so while well, he was giving his speech, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, he got the silver stick, which I guess every player who gets to 1,000 games gets a silver stick, which yeah. is nice. Uh, what else did he pick up? During that one? Uh, he got a bottle of wine, uh, the minor wine. He, right. And uh, he got a painting, right? Yeah. It was a painting very of nice himself, painting. which yeah. is really cool. It's really, really well done. Hum humongous yeah. painting, a very realistic, photorealistic type mm -hmm. painting. That was very nice. So, uh, yeah, there was that. Um, I don't know if there was anything else on, on that game you wanted to, to chat about, or? Uh, it was just, it was just a good game. Yeah. So on that week, uh, four games up, four games down, four wins. Uh, not much to complain about there. <laughs> Everybody's playing real well. Yeah. That's eight points out of eight points in yeah. a week. That's You can't ask for anything more. Love it. So uh, let's move <laughs> on. We'll talk about Burns and Eric Carlson. The two of them combined, um, <laughs> they are outscoring several teams' blue lines. <laughs> yes. You've got the stats on that one. Right. This is, uh, this is something that we had been talking about, what we were hoping for, I think, right. in the beginning of the season, uh, and it's coming to fruition mm -hmm. in 2019. So it is amazing to watch these two guys um, and not to knock Vlasic and Braun but right. a lot of this has happened when those two went out and Carlson and Burns had to take a bigger share of the minutes away from everybody else right. so now you have Carlson and Burns or Burns Carlson and or Burns <laughs> on the ice for um, 30 minutes a game right. so uh, there's not much room for, for the other guys to be on there but um, you're, you're getting to see these two guys it, it's incredible so they, they have 91 points combined uh, which is better than 17 of teams blue lines <laughs> <laughs> in the NHL more than half the teams yeah um, don't even have their entire blue line have what these two guys have so it's incredible I think I think we talked about this or I talked about this a couple couple episodes ago about 
uh, setting the trend instead right. of going after what the trend was right. of who won the last cup, uh, who went on a cup run or whatever. Right. Um, I, I mean, the difference is there's not a lot of Norris Trophy defensemen on the market. So I don't know how other teams are going to be able to copy what the Sharks are doing. Right. Um, but it is incredible to see these two guys and they are, if they're at the same pace they're at throughout the rest of the season, yeah. we could see them ending up one and two in scoring on the Sharks team, which is incredible. And I think I heard uh, Randy say it on the air the other day. Only That's only happened twice before. Wow. Um, and I don't remember who it was now, but... Um, maybe we'll have to look at Was that, you said he said it live, do you know if that was in response to anything that we had said? Because I know that we had put that out there saying, I wonder if this has ever happened before, but we're two defensemen on the same team, right. like one, two, in terms of defensemen and on scoring. He had just mentioned that they could possibly end okay. up being first and second scoring, gotcha. uh, leading their team in first and second yeah. scoring, which has only happened twice. Pretty incredible stuff yeah. there, yeah. Um, I mean, this, this kind of goes back to what I've been trying to say with uh, defense driving the offense. Right. Um, and, I, and I think that um, there's a lot to be said for the team's ability to possess the puck and break the puck through the neutral zone and get the puck up to the forwards. Um, you know, a, a lot of emphasis gets put on, you know, the forwards and the scoring and who's putting the puck in the net. But we have to look at, and I've said this many times too, we have to look at how the play develops. How did the puck get there, right? And a lot of that stems from the breakout, from the transition game. And a lot of those things come from the defensive zone. And if you can't get the puck up to your forwards, whereas we look at the first 10 games where Eric Carlson was playing with Vlasic and he was having a really rough time, they were still acclimating to his style of play and he was still figuring out how to get to those lanes, um, the, the passing lanes. They were figuring out how to find those passing lanes that he was going to be seeing mm -hmm. and anticipate that. I think they're on the roll now where they're able to do that. Maybe before it wasn't happening and that's why we weren't seeing it. Now they're able to get that puck up the ice a lot more often and I think that's leading to a lot more chances whether they're going in or not, I mean, they are going in, but whether they're going in or not, it's just better, I think, having those extra chances than yeah. the other team has. And, you know, I saw a hypothetical that was on, on Facebook, and um, basically the person was saying, you know, in this hypothetical world, this, this universe where I've got, we picked up Tavares and, and Carlson went somewhere else, right? Um, how do you think the team fares with Tavares instead? And my response to that was essentially, you know, I, I think that Tavares is still a phenomenal player. He's going to bring us a lot more goals, and the goal scoring would still be way up there for the Sharks, and we would be a better team still the way that we are, right, uh, or than we were last year, I should say. But looking at the way that Eric Carlson's been able to control the play, break us out of the zone so confidently and, and calmly. We've seen him make several moves where it's just there's a guy right on top of him and he just kind of drags it away and then all of a sudden he's by himself again, right? And he's so confident with the puck and being able to do that. And I think that Tavares, it'd be great to have him, but I think it's more valuable having somebody on the blue line who's able to bring the puck up and out of the zone. And the reason I say that is because you've got four lines of offense, guys who are primarily going to be the ones attacking and putting the puck in the net, right? You Obviously, our blue line's very strong, and Burns does a very good job of that. But the fours are the ones who are supposed to be really you know, attacking the net and doing the cycling and everything else. If they can kick it back to the point, fine. But those are the guys. Now, you have a one of the best centers in the world in John Tavares. If he's on the team, he's out there when his line is out there, right? Mm -hmm. Carlson's out there whenever we put Carlson out, and he's with every forward group. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why we see, there was a stat, seven players, and this is the only team in the NHL the Sharks are, seven players with 30 plus points. And I think a lot of that has to do with the ability to move that puck up and out of, the, out of our defensive zone oh. and bring it into the offensive zone yeah, and get those sure. chances, yeah. right? So does are we a better team with Carlson than we would have been had we got Tavares? My answer is yes. At the time, everyone was saying, we didn't need another defenseman. And I, I agreed with people all the time. Yeah, we probably didn't need it. We already have a Norris Trophy winning, you know, defenseman on the blue mm -hmm. line. Why do we need another one? We need a one C. That's what we need. And we talked on the show. We need a one C. And looking at it now, what we have is adequate at the forward position. Having the extra oomph on the blue line, they're both playing. You just said thirty minutes a game. They're pretty much out there the entire game. Mm -hmm. That means you've got two offensively minded guys who are able to bring this puck up and across the blue line into the offensive zone. That's going to help everyone on the team, not just having a, a number one player on one line. Look at Edmonton right now, mm -hmm. right? Connor McDavid, and we shut him down with one assist and he loses that game. So yeah. 
th- that's just my feeling on it. And I, I, I kind of rambled a bit there, but that was that was the whole thing with the, the whole Facebook hypothetical right. was, you know, are we a better team? And I don't think that we are. I think we're a better team with Eric Carlson than we are with John Tavares. I agree. And this argument goes back to Brent Burns being a power forward or a defenseman. Right. You want your best players on the ice all the time or as much as you can. Sure. Uh, having Burns as a forward means he's going to get 18 to 20 minutes a game. Having him as a defenseman means you get him 28 to 30 minutes a right. game. Now you got two of those guys that can do that same thing. And just sticking with Burns real quick before Carlson was on the team, right. putting Burns on the ice for 28 minutes, um, you have your best guy, best guy on the team, I think, yeah. um, on the ice for 28 minutes. He makes other players better. Now you add Carlson, another guy who is, and we've talked about this, Carlson's more of a playmaker, Burns is more of a scorer. The finisher. The yeah. finisher. Um, now you have Carlson, who is a playmaker, and uh, putting him on the ice for 30 minutes a game yeah. um, is making everyone else better around him mm-hmm. on whatever line, whatever forward line is out there, whatever his defensive pairing is at that point, it's either going to be, uh, it's been Burns recently yeah. for a little bit of it, and it's been... Um, Oh my gosh, playing Dylan. So, <laughs> so um, all those Dylan's having a career year yeah. this year. Um, so yes, I think um, Carlson makes everyone around him better. Burns does the same thing, and you have two guys that can control the puck and get it out of your own yeah. zone and possess. Um, it's been incredible, and I agree. I think um, it was it was really bumming to not get Tavares at first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you could look at was that episode. Two, Two. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when when uh, we didn't get burnt or we didn't get Tavares signed, um, and uh, episode I think it was ten when we got Carlson. Uh, thirteen, eight, was Carlson. thirteen. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that, but anyway, I I just I think uh, uh, at, at first Tav- not getting Tavares was, was bumming, but um, I don't think we saw back then that Carlson would have been a much better play to begin with, right? Um, so I'm very happy with having Carlson, and I would love to see him stay yeah. on the team. Um, so far, I yeah, still and, don't know. And and one of the things that we had said when when we were doing episode one mm-hmm. was it would never work, right, with Carlson and Burns. It and it took a while. Work. It yeah. took took two months before they started really gelling, and now three, well, four months later, and they're really working it now. And, and one of the reasons that we had said that was because we, I mean, and Burns, we still kind of say Burns isn't exactly the most defensively responsible guy on the team on the blue line. Um, Eric Carlson's been praised recently um, by by Pete DeBoer, uh, along with, I mean, not just recently, but the entire time he's been playing there, he's seen you know, how, how strong on his stick he is, mm-hmm. how he always tends to get the puck out of a corner in the defensive zone and skate out with it. He's always seems to be in the right spot, and he doesn't seem like he's the biggest guy or anything, but he always seems to be able to get the puck away from somebody when there, there's a puck battle. And so, again, that goes back to the defense leading the offense. If he's always the one coming out with the puck, and he's a playmaking type defenseman, a puck moving defenseman, mm-hmm. which he is, I mean that just helps us get up and out of the zone. And I think that's again where we're gonna see, where we're seeing a lot of the scoring chances that we're getting, and the reason that we have seven guys, most in the NHL, have more than 30 points. Yeah. So, really happy with what he's doing so far. Um, the other point about that, and we'll move into talking about Martin Jones in just a second here, is that Martin Jones got a, a bit of an uptick on his stats, and I think that has a lot to do with Carlson and Burns. And this is a, a question that we had during the live. Super Key Grip Joe over there was taking questions for <laughs> us. And... One of the questions was, you know, do you think this has anything to do with them being out, like Vlasic and Braun? And I, I do. I think it has something to do with them being out, the uptick and the, the winning that we've been doing recently. But I don't think it's because they're bad players. And I think that's what most people are trying to equate that to. And I think that's just ridiculous, quite frankly. But I think it comes down to Burns and Carlson, the possession monsters, the guys that are driving the play up the ice, specifically Carlson. Yeah. Um, they got more minutes now. They're playing 30-something minutes a night as opposed to when Vlasic's there, you got to share the minutes with Vlasic too, and they're getting closer to like the 23 or so. Right. So they got even more time on the ice for these possession monsters. So it's not so much that they're playing better defense in front of Martin Jones. It's that they're not allowing the team to play offense in the first place because we've got the puck so much. Well, I think it's a mix of both. I think sure. they are playing better defense in front of Jones. I think Jones is also playing better than he was sure. earlier. He's making bigger saves. There was a couple of breakaways that he stopped yes. instead of yeah. getting scored on. So 
Um, and those are key moments in the game, too, where uh, it could have... I, I mean, it was... What was it? The Vegas one, especially. He yeah. played out of his mind. Um, stopped Vegas on a couple t- couple chances where I was like, oh, man, they're, you could just feel it. They're going to score. Yeah. You know they're going to score. And they didn't. And then the Sharks came around right after that, after after not even getting any uh, offensive zone mm-hmm. time, uh, came in and scored two quick goals to take the lead and, and take the win. So Jones is playing a lot better, and his numbers are definitely improving from where they were. Right. So let's see. Uh, his last five games, he went 5-0, and 2.01 goals against average, and his save percentage was 93, nice. 9, 930. Yeah. Um, and going back to comparing him to Dell... Which is not <laughs> kind of fair, because right. Dell hasn't been getting as many starts as he was uh, since Jones has been playing better. But um, I mean, Dell's last five games, he's three one and one, three point two nine, and eight fifty seven. So to me, the team defense is roughly the same for the both goalies, but Jones is making bigger saves. Jones is trending up, Dell's trending down a little bit, but yeah, yeah okay. And this is the same thing that happened last se- a year ago. Yeah, Dell. Everyone was kind of debating, oh, is there a goalie, you know, a right. goalie controversy? Mm-hmm. Uh, Dell should be the starter, and Dell kind of took a couple more starts and then faltered right before the trade deadline. Right. So, um, Dell, he is a good goalie, and I'm not trying to knock him. I'm right. not trying to like <laughs> say he's awful, but trade him. Yeah, no. right. Well, he's <laughs> he's um, we'll get to that later too. He's <laughs> not going to be a starter. He's not going to take over. And I think a lot of people, right. I think that's kind of quelled a little bit now uh, that Jones has been five yeah. and zero. Oh. Um, so, um, and you have their stats Jones. on the season as well. I mean, the, the, the yeah. So, so the season stats. So um, Jones is now twenty one eight and four, uh, two point seven four goals against a nine oh three save percentage. So the save percentage is finally over nine hundred. Right. Um, that's going to take a little bit longer to sure. get up a little bit higher to his career average. But um, in comparison to Dell, he's six five and three. Uh, was that three oh two and eight ninety one? So right. Not so good. Um, again, similar to last year, heading into that trade deadline, um, yeah. Dell's not looking so great. So his value is kind of getting less. So his value, I think, is with the Sharks team. Right. I don't think his value is going to be enough to get traded for something else. Well, and I, and I, I look at and the reason I, I brought up the whole trade him thing was because even during the live, we get lots of questions about <laughs> you know people I, saying, "Hey, sh- who should we trade for for this, or what should we get for that, and or whatever I else." Think three quarters of our questions <laughs> were about trades. It was, yeah. <laughs> well, but then we go back to all these folks saying, "Hey, let's let's uh, trade Martin Jones because we need a better goaltender, get Bobrovsky or whatever, right?" And you know, I, I, he didn't start off so hot, right? But I think now he's warmed up. He's ready to go. Right. And you take a look at not only just the last five, he won five straight. So it's not really fair to just say, oh, look at his last five. He's phenomenal, right? Okay, let's take a look at the body of work again this whole season. 21, 8 and something. There's nothing wrong with 21 wins, 8 losses, right. and whatever. You know, I, I don't know. I just don't see it. I think there's there's a tendency to jump too far ahead. And we've been saying, like, wait, yeah. wait for Jones. He's going to get better. He always gets better towards the end of the yeah. year, which is a much better... You want a goalie that gets better at the end of the year, whereas Bobrovsky is the complete opposite. When he gets on and he, he, the year drags on, his stats start to go lower, and that's what's happening right now in Columbus. And in fact, he just got suspended a game last week from Columbus because he stormed off after getting pulled. He didn't right. go to the bench. He went straight to the locker room. <laughs> so... Uh, they they suspended him for one game, right. um, so he couldn't even suit up for them. And then, um, so Bobrovsky is just not. <laughs> I don't. I never thought he was a good trade target to begin with. Um, I I would rather much rather have Jones over uh, Bobrovsky. If you look at their career playoff stats, it's yeah. night and day. So uh, Jones for me, he's the starter for the Sharks, and he should be. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. So uh, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to, to talk about with the whole, like, everyone screaming trades. I know it's... The trade thing is, is there's a lot of people, and, and, we, and we're not trying to knock people. People no, kind of sure. get upset about this when we, we call them video game, video game trade. I don't know. Mentality. It's a, yeah. it's a, it is. It's a video game mentality because you take the, the human element out of it, right? Right. And you're just looking at the numbers. His overall number in a video game, but in in real life, okay, his goals against average is better, right? He he, his save percentage is better, so he's a better goaltender, right? Which that doesn't always mean that if you trade for that guy, he's going to be just as good for you. And right? people always look for future free agents, right? Basically, so you can kind of get like a rental player. Um, but I I just to me, the Sharks aren't going to get a 
top scoring guy. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this and watch Doug Wilson's going to go out and do it and make me <laughs> Panarin. eat my shoe. But <laughs> yeah, because um, we don't have a first round pick in this year or next year's draft. And that's what most people are going to want when you're trading a top end talent from a team that's not going to make playoffs and they're trying to unload salary. You're trying to unload a, a veteran player. So most likely it's going to be a third or fourth line winger. Um, maybe a little bit of scoring, but yeah. not much. A veteran. Basically, somebody somebody older on a team that might have an expiring contract in this year or next year, maybe right. even another year, and um, trying to unload them for something, some kind of either trade or a draft pick or like a lower draft pick yeah. or a, a prospect. Yeah. And we don't even have that many prospects, and I don't think they'd want to trade... Ah, uh, okay. So here's I, I went to I went to the Barracuda game um, today, and that's actually where I got um, my. Yep. I didn't get the jersey, but I, I did get this little um, hurdle bobble, which is cool. Anyway, so I went to the the Barracuda game uh, today, and you know they they are a good team. They're killing it out there. So whether or not another team might look at them from the outside and say, you know, they've got a lot of good players, maybe one of those guys we'd we'd want to snag up. You know, like a, a, say Perron, for instance, right? Right. We just got him. Yes, he's phenomenal. He's he's great in the AHL. Does it translate to the NHL? We don't know. Or we haven't given him a look yet in the in the NHL level. Maybe some teams willing to give up something that's uh, you know a bigger deal because of what he's capable of doing in the AHL, and they think it'll translate over. So, I in terms of us having or not having the the shelves stocked, um, I don't know. I think some teams look at the the success of the Barracuda and go, well, there's got to be something going on there. They must have some pretty good players, and I think the stats speak for themselves too. So, good players or good coaches. That Roy Summer is a phenomenal coach. Yep, I absolutely will agree with you on that one. I so. think he is. He's very keyed in on yeah. everything and yeah. knows what a player needs. Yes, to get to the next level. Um, I think that's why the Sharks do so well with late round draft picks. An excellent point. So that's a whole uh, on topic, the though. trade <laughs> front. I would say. Um, stop it. <laughs> um, no, the only thing really with trades is, you know, we're not looking at bringing in some huge talent like you're saying. We're looking at bringing right. in somebody who's gonna, probably a winger. Um, Don Square recently got injured, so maybe a little bit of depth in the wing. We already have centermen that are playing as wingers, so if we had a centerman go out, we can always shift someone in, look at what Hurdle's doing right now, right? Mm -hmm. So we're probably looking at maybe, um, you know, a lower minutes type of winger. Uh, maybe a veteran uh, that Dezingle from Ottawa. A lot of people have been talking about him. It'd be cool to have him as well. He was the the, the goal against in, yeah. uh, in Ottawa or yeah. uh, uh, during the Ottawa game. Um, so a, a guy like that maybe, but no one that we're going to drop a, a huge prospect or a huge pick for. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, um, having said that, again, calm down on the trade front. Uh, I think <laughs> we maybe just just take some time to relax and enjoy the fact that the Sharks are rolling right now. Right. And, just, just take solace in that. We don't need to change anything up. It's it goes fantastic. back to the, to I think it was episode two. Did we need to do anything on the whole trading thing, right? Uh, with uh, or free agent signings, right. rather? Did we need to do anything? Well, it seems like we didn't really need to do well, anything. There's a lot of people so. that get upset when yeah. Doug Wilson does nothing and they want to fire him. <laughs> and if the Sharks were 500 right now, they'd yeah. just, they'd be yelling for his head. Absolutely. So it's amazing what winning can do, right? We, uh, we are a phenomenal team, and I'm just going to continue to enjoy <laughs> the games. And uh, one way or another, I have no say on who gets traded or whatever anyway. So whatever. Right. Anyway, moving on from that, again, stop with the trade talk. Uh, <laughs> moving on from that, the uh, the week that's coming up here, we've got uh, three games, I believe. The first one is Tuesday. Tuesday at home against the Penguins. Right. It'll be a fun game. It's always a fun game when the Penguins come into town. <laughs> Uh, kind of a rematch of the 2016. Not that there's, you know, a lot of players left right. from both teams at that point. Uh, but the 2016 Stanley Cup Finals. Um, and then right after that, the next day, they're on the road in Arizona. Um, Arizona's not doing so hot. They never really are, but they're never an easy team. I mean, there's right. not really an easy easy game these days in the NHL. Yeah, even, I'm even for the team, like the Kings yeah. game was a tough game. Um, and they're at the bottom of the Pacific, so um, Arizona's not trending in the right direction, but uh, never an easy game. Right. Um, There's just too much parity in the league. Yes, totally. Like the, it, again, in other sports like basketball, you can have you know like Warriors or whoever else again uh, against you know the bottom team in the league, and they're probably going to win. Yeah. In, in hockey, you just you just never know. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can show up on any given night, and anybody can just you know turn into a ghost on any given night as well. So, 
yeah. all games are good games, and that's just one of them. So the last game uh, is a few days out, so that'll be nice. It's, it's in nice. Tampa Bay. Correct. So that, that'll be uh, that's going to be a tough one because yeah. Tampa is going to want to maybe get a little revenge on their <laughs> loss in San Jose. Um, good thing for the Sharks is they're going to the East Coast, and it's easier to go to the East Coast from the West Coast in terms of body clock and your time. Um, so the games won't be feeling on your body like it's later in the night. Right. Um, and they have three days because it's from Wednesday to Saturday from the game in Arizona till uh, Tampa Bay. So they'll get probably at least a day or two in Tampa yeah. before they uh, play their game. Um, and then uh, then I believe they come back and then one more game and then the All-Star break. I don't remember. But um, yeah, it's going to be uh, three important games this week. I mean, they're all they're important. They're all important. Yeah. But... Penguins will be exciting. That'll be at home. Tampa Bay is going to be exciting. The Arizona one will probably be boring because it's Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> the Desert Dogs. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, o I'm over them saying, but whatever. It doesn't matter. So yeah. what, do you, what do you want to see? How many... Uh, okay, so uh, we are undefeated in 2019. Okay, let's, let's, let's change the question. No. <laughs> do you think they're going to lose one of these three games? Do you think a streak continues? Uh, I think if, if they're going to lose one of the three games, it's going to be the game in Tampa Bay. If they're going to lose one of those those games, um, and we've also seen uh, Jones and Net versus Dell and Net. We've talked about it this episode. I think the chances change depending on who you've got in Net as well. I think if you play Dell against a team like Tampa Bay, you, you're I bet they're playing play with fire Del against Arizona. Yeah, I think they'll play it's back and, to yeah. back. I think it'll be uh, Jones Peng against the Penguins, yep. Dell Arizona, and then Jones again in Tampa Bay. So. Um, if there was one of those games that I feel like we have the least chance of winning it, I would say Tampa Bay because it's in Tampa Bay as well. Yeah. Um, and yes, there's we get some time, but there is still travel, and you know body clock is still a, a factor there. So whereas they're sitting at home and they're they're happy. See, I think so. that's the easy answer. I'm gonna say, oh, uh, <laughs> Arizona is gonna be the one that we lose, ah. just because it's a back to back. They kind of play less against okay. lesser teams. Okay. And I bet uh, they're going to play a tough game against the Penguins. Yeah. And then Arizona the next night, and Arizona's kind of a bigger team, grindier I, team. I think Pete DeBoer called this the trap game. Yes. Is this correct? You want to explain the trap game, what that means? No, go ahead. I, I, okay, so basically <laughs> it's the, the day after. It's, it's the, the day after on the, on a back-to-back -back where you've, you've been playing and you have a lot of emotional uh, game going on, which the Penguins game will be because it's that, that rematch and there's still mm -hmm. some, some bitterness there, I'm sure. And then you go and you play a team like Arizona, the Desert Dogs, who are not doing too well, and maybe you have a hard time getting up for that game. So that's the trap game. You fall into a trap of just thinking, okay, well, we, we got past the Penguins game. Now it's Arizona whatever. And then you don't play so well. So, yeah, maybe you're right. That could be the harder game. That, that'll be my guess. Okay. And that'll be interesting to see next week. So you think that they're going to they, they're going to beat the Penguins, lose the uh, the the Coyotes, and then beat Tampa Bay in yes. their house? I think four out of six points this week. Okie dokie. You heard it here first. Maybe not first, but you heard it here at least. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anything else you want to uh, chat about here? A little last last second anything? Uh, visit our store. Yes. Uh, Thefinfactor.com. Okay. And you can pick up. We have black, teal, gray shirts. Uh, that are unisex. We have a black V-neck women's mm -hmm. cut shirt. Deep V-neck. And we have awesome hats. Uh, they have very thick embroidery on them, the Fin Factor, and buying any of those will help support the show. Absolutely. And we would love that very much. The other thing I'd like you guys to do, if, you're, if it's possible for you and you're a night owl like we are, um, if you're <laughs> subscribed to the show, you'll get a notification letting you know when we do go live. And the lives are so much fun. I really do enjoy taking the questions directly from you guys uh, live. So um, it, it's great. It's, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, we get to field your questions. And sometimes we get talking points from the lives, which are great yeah, because true. we add those into the show as well. So uh, we had somebody actually from Ottawa this time around. And, did. and they said they're a Sharks fan in Ottawa. So... Good on you. That's so a late night in Ottawa. It sure <laughs> is. So, uh, I mean, again, thanks for, for tuning in. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate you guys, um, you know, popping in and watching us just kind of talk here. So um, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so then we will <laughs> see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode 
And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.